All right, teachers, so this is Mr. Karampatan here, and today's uh, training would be regarding DDAP, is Data-Driven Action Planning. And this is important why we need to do this, so that way uh, when we are making adjustments on our lessons, that we are calibrating and we're ensuring that we are making our decisions based on data. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to use what we have for one of the assessments they have, and it's really irrelevant what assessment this is right now because the whole point is just to ensure that we are understanding how to look at the process, right? So let's go ahead and get started. So this is the template that you guys will have, okay? Uh, and now what we're going to do is look at the overall of you as a teacher. So you go to Strive and you go through, um, and sorry, Eduphoria, and you look at Aware, and then it'll come up there as an overall teacher, and it will show up like this. So as an overall teacher, as an example, I had 15.57% uh, of my scholars were approaches, and then meets was 8.2, and then masters was, as mentioned here, uh, 2.46, okay? So that's the overall in this one. Now, from there, what I would like to do is do a subgroup uh, of my overall, right? And at that particular thing, I will look at this and I say 2.38 for African-American. And we're only looking for meets, correct? So I have this here, all the information that is here on this side. That is what we have, okay? Now, that's where we're going to put all of these. Now, the more important part, which is now the breakdown per period. And this is where we have right here. So in the particular period, let's just say for first period... Here's the information that I will have. Again, it'll break it down on uh, Edgeforia for you, which period it is. Uh, and then secondly, uh, we are going to be able to really isolate where we can uh, figure out what is, uh, how to help our scholars. So, also please be reminded that you have to do period one, period two, period three, period four, period five, period six, and period oh, six periods for you, right? Because there's six periods that you have to break down. So, on this particular example, uh, let's just say that this is my period number one breakdown. So I will just put in that this is a seventh grade. So my approaches is 14.4, my meets is 5.35, and then my masters was 1.65. And that is why all this information is right here, okay? Because this is a seventh grade. Now, you're gonna be asked, what are the standards that you rocked as a teacher? Well. Here's how the way to do that. So let's take a look at this one now. And you have an ability to pull this out using the individual answer uh, that you have in uh, Edgeforia. I'm sorry, in Edgeforia. It will look um, something like this. Okay, so it will look something like this. So you go to Edgeforia, and then you are going to do uh, individual responses. This will allow you to see... Um, whatever it is that you need to see again this is just an example okay of what it is so we're going to use back to our uh, problem now the pro uh, paperwork that we have all right so now if i look at this the question becomes is what standards is that you rock so basically we're going to look at every question that we had on the assessment and see which ones was the ones that were the ones that we scored the best on and on this particular problem particular assessment it was question number two, because that was the highest. It was 59% of the students got it right. And then also number six, which is another 59%, also got it correctly. And if you notice, it is very important that we label whether it's a supporting or a 7.4B. How do I know that? Because number two is, says right here what the TEKS is. And then number six, it also says what the TEKS is right here. And see, this S means supporting, and R means readiness. So we know that readiness, uh, there's more, it carries more weight because there's more problems that comes up. And supporting is just there to support the ideas for the other TEKS, right? So now, so those are the things that we celebrate because we rock that. Now, this is where for continuous improvement, this is the part that we need to address right here. So standards that are for improvement. So these are the standards that we know we did not do well as uh, in a class in a period. And the way to look at that is just go through 
and find out which ones have the lowest success that we have. On this particular period, again, because this is a period right here, I see that number five, which is 75C, is a readiness, and number 12, if you look at it, is also 75C. They're all in the 30s, which tells me that they are not, I mean, look at this, there's a really big correlation because this is the exact same teak. And then if you look at 7 and 14, again, 79% did not even attempt to get it right. So that means NC means not completed. So that's 80% really did not know what they're doing. And then here it gets reinforced by the fact that number 14, which is the same teak again, it's also a low standard. So that is why we have this information right here. This is going to be very important, teachers, because... This is going to base, this information is what we are going to use to base our reteach, right? So now, let's talk about some of the breakdowns first. Let's look at number five, right? If you look at number five, the correct answer was B and only 32% got it right. But then if you look at it, each of the choices are very close to each other. So you cannot really identify which one was the next best answer that students chose. But if you look at this, how the breakdown is so close to each other, the likelihood of this is that the students most likely guessed, which means even worse now because they have no clue. They were just guessing. And it gets solidified again by the same concept with our other issues. Again, the same thing with number 14, 36, 29. There's a couple things here that are very close, which means to tell me if I were to do the reteach, right? 36 and 29, this is the closest next answer. So I might have to look at what were the scholars doing on here so that way I can eliminate misconceptions when we reteach. So this is one way to look at our, how we do our uh, DDAP. And this is actually how you reteach this. Again, if you look at number 10, this isn't one of the lowest ones, but we are just going to talk about it for the exact same concept. This is the correct answer was J. And the one that they chose the most, most students chose was H. So we need to also take a look at that later. So that is number 10 on the assessment. And that is uh, 7.4D. And again, this is also a readiness. Okay. And we are going to go back to that later because this is important again for our reteach. Okay. So now let's go to the actual problem itself, right? So now... Let's go to this one now. Now we've addressed these. So now what? Because now we know what the scholars need. These are the questions that we need to discuss. So here on the, you know, on this next part of this, uh, our template is what should the scholars know about the lowest teaks? And we said the lowest teaks were 7.5C, 7.9C, uh, and then really we added 7.4C. But for the sake of our conversation right now, let's do this. What should the scholars know about your lowest teak? This is where you go back to the actual uh, teak description and figure out that, hey, this is what our scholars need to know. It has to do with similar shapes and scale drawings for these two problems. And then in here is composite figures containing combinations of different shapes. So what should the scholars be able to do about these lowest teaks? And this is where we go back to the actual assessment that we have and look at what exactly is it that they need. How were they able to do it? If you look at number, let's start with number five. This is the problem that they really had. It's a similar triangle they're looking for this. So what must they do? They must be able to set up similar triangles using ratios and proportions. That's what they need to do and then solve, right? And so that's gonna be this ongoing pattern of these uh, particular problems. And if you look at number seven again, where it was 80% did not even get it right, did not even attempt, look at the shape. It's basically a composite figure where they have to identify what are the shapes in the figure. So we have a triangle, we have a rectangle, and then know what to do with it. So they have to find the area, identify this first as a triangle, identify this as a rectangle, find the area of this, and you also find the area of this, and then you combine them together. So those are the kinds of concepts that we need to be able to do uh, to attack and reteach this. Now, here's where the meat and the potatoes come in. 
the action plan for the reteach. First, you have to determine what day you're going to do the reteach, right? So you have to figure out whether it's going to be here. And then what teaks was it that you guys are going to do? So for example, in here, I'm just going to give an example. I will do with seven. I will start with seven, five C. Right? Seven, five C. And then we need to identify which students it is that you need to tackle and ensure that we uh, that we're helping here. So I'm not going to be able to write a name, but we know what is going, you know, who it is, because again, you will find it on the individualized report on Edgephoria. Uh, and activity for reteaching, what are you going to do? What activity as a group or as a teacher are you going to do to tackle this problem that you have set up right here that we've identified what the needs are? And then from there, you know, you find out what are you going to use to reassess. So it could be another exit ticket, right? Or it could be a two or three question reassessment that you have. And you record the scholars of students who are performing better, who made the adjustment, and scholars who did not do well. So again, we can go ahead and retarget them. But really, teachers, this is how we do the DDAP, is we are just continuously making refinement for the, with the information that we have. Uh, if you have any other questions with this, uh, please contact Ms. Dillard or myself or your administrator uh, to ask for further details. Thank you.